Hey, you guys. Long time no see.
think I've seen you in here before. Hi, rapper. Hi, Daniel Berry Sports, Amanda Elizabeth, Ashley's World, Sierra, Artsy, Susie, Karina, Too Tall Rob Live. It has been a little bit. The drama was driving you nuts. Yeah. Oh, you like the new haircut? Well, it's it was up to here. Now it's down a little more. It's getting cuter. Thank you. Hi, everyone. Yeah, I never know what kind of music is going to come about. I'm up on a bed now, you guys. I'm not on the floor. I'm on a bed against a real comfortable, hardish, soft wedge. I can't explain it, but boy, does it feel good. Man, it feels good. And I'm using a table. This table is from uh, Maggie. From the UK, she sent it to me like two months ago, and I, I didn't know about the lighting. I like having the light behind me, but it's off. And then I have my lamp on with a plink, plink, pink sheer, uh, whatever it's called, silk scarf over it. So I have a little bit of hue to my face. My hair looks brown, right? Almost black. It's not. You see, it's a deep red. Very, very red. <laughs> I mean, it's really red. When I'm in the light, it's very red. I should show you guys. I don't think I want to get up, though. Well, that's not working. I'll just try to get closer. See? See how red it is? Okay, see some light there? Uh Anyway, the roots were coming in too much. It was driving me nuts. Hi, Truth Seeker. Hi, everyone. I know I haven't been here for three nights. Like I said on Leanies last night, for those of you that didn't know I was over there, I just went in to say hi, and she invited me up, and I was up there, gosh, I don't know, maybe two hours on panel, and we've got a whole new little idea of going on with me um dancing in costumes um just a little bit in the beginning of my lives and uh this kind of deal so each costume each week is going to be a surprise uh but the first one is supposed to be a little nurse's outfit yes very interesting i think i could pass for a nurse especially with my hair so matronly <laughs> all right so it's saturday night now that's the other thing i thought yesterday was saturday and it was only friday so um it's really good to see all of you please hit the like and we are now on in this book of you can be happy no matter what Five Principles for Keeping Life in Perspective by Richard Carlson, Ph.D., who also wrote the book, Don't Sweat the Small Stuff. We're in the middle. Look at that. And we're on the fourth principle. We've covered uh, the other principles, which were thought. Now I can't even remember them. See this? Can't even remember the principles. Thought moods separate realities and now we're onto the fourth one feelings and the fifth one is principle of the present moment which has never been easy for me to live in the present moment i'm always future tripping and stuff 
Hi, everybody. Books. <laughs> you want 500? Is that the WAA? I know that's just a typo. Well, you should be close. I'm not going to put links in my chat, though, because YouTube frowns on that. I got a lot of inf in interesting information sent to me that I looked up and that Maria G found. I'm not putting my ch my link in other people's chats either. It affects YouTube. They frown upon that. And I, I always thought we could kind of just share, right? All right, so the principle of feelings. You are only one thought away from a good feeling. Is that true? I guess it is by Sheila Crystal. Okay. You have at your disposal a foolproof guidance system to navigate you through life. This system, which consists solely of your feelings, lets, lets you know when you are off track and headed toward unhappiness and conflict, away from healthy psychological functioning. Your feelings act as a barometer, letting you know what your internal weather is like. Huh. We recognize the powerful connection between our own thinking and our experience of life. When we think, we immediately feel the effects of our thoughts. It happens in an instant, and for most of us, without awareness, it awareness that it is happening. I wanted to read this book because it's been 11 years since I've read it, and it's from my beautiful mother. See? For the people out there that think I don't have a close relationship with my mom. She sent me many books since then, since this. Um, but there's my birthday, June 27, <clears throat> for Megan on her birthday for her 50th. The best gift is your happiness. All my love, mom. And um, I'm sure she sent me a lot of other books. I kind of almost wished I had a bookcase. You know, I don't own a bookcase, but... Maybe I can find one at Goodwill someday. <laughs> okay, I'm not, I don't read a ton, you guys. Um, but I'll read this first little part of this chapter. Uh, we think in one of two ways, either habitually through our individual thought system or through what is called a natural state of mind, healthy psychological functioning. We have discussed the effects of thinking through your thought system. In this chapter, you will see that you have another very real alternative. The fourth principle states that our feelings tell us with complete accuracy when our thinking is dysfunctional. Well, that's good to know, isn't it? When we are not aware we are thinking, our thoughts are generated through the thought system instead of through healthy functioning. Okay, I'm going to read that again because sometimes I need to like remind myself of stuff. When we are not aware, we are thinking. We're not aware that we're thinking. Our thoughts are generated through the thought system instead of through healthy functioning. If it were not for our feelings, we would never know when we were caught up in our own thought systems or when we were in a low mood. We would be convinced that we were seeing life realistically, even in our lowest states of mind. Hi, Jane J. Hi, Lulu. Hi, everyone. Loving mother. I know. And many people know I haven't seen her since this last September, 12 years. And it's life. And a lot of the, which made it so long, on top of her husband's cancer and all the treatments he had to have and all the traveling to the Mayo Clinic from Iowa to Rochester, Minnesota um, and money issues and everything in my life and having to be here with my son like a lot because, well, I don't want to talk about his dad, but his, his dad has his own challenges in life and and he doesn't always stay with him we'll just put it that way but um he wants to come back here with me and his sister and the, the cats and whatever um so between all that 
and then the darn pandemic, right? Epidemic, pandemic. Uh, those three years, boom. I mean, I just couldn't believe it. She thought it was 10. I said, no, no, mom, it's been 11. Because then it was 11 when we were talking about it. And we still talk about it every summer that comes. You know, we decide, do we have the money? Does she have some? Do I, do I have any? Um, and, you know, with my past trust fund that I've talked about a lot and won't always, always talk about, but I have to get animals to the vet. You know, when you have animals, you've got to get them to the vet now and then uh, for their shots and things like that. And animals, now anyway, hi, according to Lini, hi. That little nurse's outfit is like from the very top. You might have to send me that Amazon link thing. It was like the fourth or fifth lady over. And she had little white booty shorts on and this tight white whatever. There was no hat, I don't think. Then she had on like these white go-go looking boot things. So I love the nightlife. I've got a boogie. On the disco. Ay, ay. <laughs> oh, you're so funny. Hi, Keith Yutzi. Hi, Medusa. Hi, thanks everyone for being here. You guys, I took a nap today. I I don't always <clears throat> even have time for naps. I mean, I I let the cats in and out all through the night, sleep on the bed, jump down, play, bang into the door, run out, run in. And I kept falling back to sleep, but I was, I don't know what I was doing. I might have been on Messenger. It's been pouring rain, pouring. And I mean to where I wanted to like show it. It was the kind that just, but a loud, not a light, like a, like a pouring rain and it's beautiful. I, I like it. Luckily I like rain, but, uh, go to the clinic once a month, you can get shots. Oh, that's nice. That's good to know, Susie. That's nice to know. Hi, MSO 426. Hi everyone. Um, so yeah. All right, so what was I going to say? I don't know. I can't remember, but I just thought of it. I'll go ahead and put my banner up. I'll put my little ticker, my little cash app and PayPal. If anybody ever wants to help me with my many cats and three kittens. Well, I don't have many cats. Well, I have the mama cat, two cats, and three kittens. So really, I will eventually have six cats. It's a lot. But it is what it is, and they're real joy. And um, <clears throat> I mean, when they're born in your house, you know, and they're little babies, you don't even hardly think one is going to thrive. I didn't think Tulip was going to make it. He could never seem to find a nipple on Soots, the mama kitty. And Sunshine was always right there, just spreading her whole body and really getting into it and <clears throat> hogging up the nipples, it seemed like to me. I mean, to the point where I bought, what's that? Kitten formula stuff in cans. It was six fifty a can and I bought four. I mean, I had to make sure I had enough. Part of one I used and I fed Tulip with a eyedropper thing a few times. And it just wasn't really working. I didn't know if he was getting enough or if it was just coming out mostly on his face. I just, I don't know. My mother said, just just let him be. Let him get in there. He'll, he should be okay. And I did. I stopped micromanaging uh, Soot's tits with the kittens. <laughs> And it worked. He's healthy as a, and the ones I showed earlier are sunshine and um, rain up here. And Tulip is under the bed with her mama or the daddy. 
Okay, um, where on earth am I on here? Okay, so if it were not for our feelings, we would never know when we were caught up in our thought systems or when we were in a low mood. We would be convinced that we were seeing life realistically, even in our lowest states of mind. Maybe I already read that. I don't remember. It's my short term sucks. When we are not caught up in thought systems, our feelings remain positive. We have a feeling of contentment and a sense of joy in whatever we happen to be doing. There doesn't seem to be a rationale for the positive feeling. We just feel good. We experience the deeper, more generic human feelings that are generated from a natural state of mind, contentment, love, and gratitude. This is a state in which we see life clearly. We have soft focus and concentration. Our mind is clear. We can do anything in this state of mind, including unpleasant things, because our minds are not cluttered with the thoughts of the past, the future, or judgments about how we are doing. We deal with whatever or whoever is before us. This is the state of mind from which new and creative ideas evolve and where solutions to problems seem obvious. Each one of us has access to the state of mind and when we are in it, no mental adjustment needs to be made. Everything just flows naturally. When our experience of life is other than pleasant, our warning system of feelings kicks in like a red flag, reminds us that we are off track. We have reverted back to thinking that our thought system. We have reverted back to thinking through our thought system. We are now thinking in a dysfunctional manner and it's time to make a mental adjustment. Our feelings are to our mental health as the warning lights on our dashboards are to our automobiles. Both let us know that it's time to ease up. In the car, we ease off the accelerator. It's time to pull off the road. Likewise, when we feel discontented, we need to clear our heads and stop what we are thinking, which brings us back to a positive feeling. Temporarily drop the thinking which is coming from a distorted and habitual frame of reference. Remember, dismissing or ceasing to listen to thoughts that are upsetting does not mean pretending that things don't bother us or need improvement but a good solution or new ideas will never come about from dysfunctional thinking, only from a positive feeling state where life seems easy. We need to begin to discredit the validity of our thought system when it comes to maintaining and accessing our own mental health. Decide once and for all that negative feelings aren't worth defending and harboring. The only value in negative feelings is to let us know that we are seeing life in a distorted manner. This idea is heavily contested in current psychological thinking. Many, if not most, psycho psychologists today share the belief that becoming more aware of your feelings, whatever they are, and then expressing them represents emotional maturity. Nothing could be further from the truth. If your mood is the source of your experience, not the effect, when you are in a low mood or feeling badly, you will generate negative thoughts 100% of the time. If you feel badly and a psychologist or anyone else asks, how are you feeling? He or she is in fact asking you to explain how you see life when you are in a low mood. When your mood is higher, you will have a drastically different description of the very same events. There is no value in low mood, except to remind you that you are thinking in a dysfunctional manner and shouldn't trust or seriously listen to yourself at present. You hear that? Someone's touched someone's car. Distrust your feelings in a low mood. Remember, in a low mood, we will always be able to point to reasons why we feel the way we do, and we will be tempted to trust our thoughts. But our thoughts in a low mood will be distorted, and because our feelings are a direct result of our thinking, so too will our feelings be distorted. Unpleasant feelings are an accurate indicator to let us know when we are thinking directly from our belief system, our habits, beliefs, the tapes that play in our heads. 
I'm always itching under this eye. See how it's pinker right there? And then over here. Oh. But I haven't sneezed. I don't think I sneezed yesterday. Maybe once, not at all today. So I don't know if that's because it rained and the pollen is gone. I don't know if I have allergies now, but I never used to. It's weird. Um, the guidance system of feelings works perfectly 100% of the time. Trust it. It doesn't matter whether you are feeling stressed, overwhelmed, angry, depressed, lonely, frustrated, jealous, judgmental, or anxious. These feelings and others like them are there to tell you that you are looking at life through your thought system, not with your natural state of mind. If you continue thinking in the same unproductive way, you will not find the answers you are looking for. When a warning light flashes in our car, the particular reason why it's flashing is not as crucial at first is the fact that it is flashing. The thing to do is pull off the road, turn off the motor. The way our feelings work is analogous. Whenever we are feeling angry, jealous, resentful, greedy, depressed, or in some way unhappy, we need to understand that these feelings are being manufactured by our own thought system and are not natural, accurate, or representative of reality. Okay. Hmm. Healthy psychological functioning. This is short. There is no magic or mystery to healthy psychological functioning. It is always present when we aren't engaged in our habitual thought system. Healthy functioning is the feeling we experience when little, if anything, is on our minds. A positive feeling state that exists for no apparent reason. Children possess this state of mind frequently experiencing life simply without putting too much negative thought into it. When they do experience negativity or frustration, they are able to let it go quickly and return to their natural state of happiness. We've all experienced healthy functioning countless times since we were children. Perhaps it happened while you were sitting in front of a fireplace, taking a walk, or looking at a beautiful sunset. Healthy functioning is present whenever you feel wonderful for no particular reason. The important point is that the fireplace or the activity didn't cause your good feeling. What happened was that you temporarily relaxed, cleared your mind of concerns, and simply took a few moments to enjoy your life. If you think you need a fireplace or a particular activity to clear your mind, you will be able to relax and be contented only in certain situations. Once you understand that it's yourself and not the fire or the sunset that is producing the positive feeling inside, you can clear your mind at will. It becomes easier as you practice it, I promise you. Huh. Okay, I'm going to read one more little part because it's also about healthy functioning. Does not depend on our circumstances. We all have access to healthy functioning whenever we want it, once we know that it exists independent of our circumstances. This knowledge allows us to feel good, even when things aren't going well. As long as our minds aren't focused on our concerns, we will remain in healthy functioning and maintain our sense of well-being. In this positive feeling state, we will be equipped to deal effectively with any aspect of our lives. The moment our mind shifts out of this state and back into our thought system, which will remind us of our concerns, we lose our sense of well-being and again see life as a series of problems to overcome. Your feelings are the barometer that tell you whether you are experiencing life from your thought system or from your natural state of mind. If you are feeling depressed, angry, or frustrated, these feelings tell you that your thinking is dysfunctional, that you are not experiencing your life as it could be lived. Drop whatever you are thinking, ignore the static, and make the mental adjustment to clear your head. Shift gears from your computer mode to your transmitter mode, from your thought system to your healthy functioning. Remember you are only one thought away from a good feeling. Okay, well, that's, I like that. I liked that. 
<sighs> Are people not commenting or did it just stop? I mean, I don't have a ton of people watching. But it usually, oh, there, it's moving now. I'm back. Hi, Medusa. You have lots of cats too, Truth Seeker. Hi, everyone. No, it's good to be here. You know, you can, um, that made so much sense. Oh, thanks. Thanks, Red Moss. If you're not subbed up to me, would you sub up to me? You guys, I was so excited. I don't, Lini, you're still here. <laughs> you're so silly, Lini. You, you do that. I want to put your thing up here. You do that. You're funny. Um, maybe you can send me that one link, you know, that you pulled up on your stream yard, Lini, last night. And I'll show you the costume I'd like. I mean, I don't think it's going to be 30 bucks. It might be like 60 or something. Well, hi, Raider. You little silly. You and Lini should come up. And... <laughs> Excuse me. Oh, good grief. I doubt that. Raider and I would beg to differ. <laughs> and if Wild Angel comes in, she could come up. She's been wanting to for a while. And I didn't know what time I was going to start. And I was supposed to let her know. And when she finds out, I didn't even let her know. She's probably going to be disappointed. Maybe she's busy. Maybe she's, you're funny. I can hear your voice. Girl, I tell no lies. It's so funny. Um, but, so remember there was like lines and lines of nurses outfits like that. It was the very first line and it was either the fourth or the fifth over, kind of in the middle. Yeah, don't you remember it? Remember I pointed it out last night? Um, I don't know. I was just thinking that might be a good one. We'll get our uh, uh, managerial and, okay, you're the manager, I'm the client. The managerial client thing going or whatever I'm trying to say. All right, this won't be too long for those that want to come up on my panel. Here's Pebbles in the Pond, Living with Chronic Neurobiological Disorders, which I'm reading about because a few weeks ago it dawned on me that there still really is a stigma put out there on mental health awareness that people think it's not as profound for the person suffering with it as it really is or could be, um, that the parents or even friends want to label their kid and or their friend and just treat them differently for whatever reasons, right? Um, it's been implied to me that I'm doing all this for financial gain or something. No, no. I got help by TRAP, Treasury Rental Assistance Program, for quite a few months. And I didn't ask him for a dime. I wanted him to be able to get that chair he needed, um, the Xbox he wanted, the games he wanted, a nice fan he wanted, whatever it was that he wanted. I could have said, well, you got to give me this and this for whatever, and I didn't. So now, you know, he's helping me right now, and I don't see anything wrong with that. And when you're on SSI, you need to be paying some rent somewhere. You're supposed to be. 
you know, you're supposed to save the, uh, what are they called? The receipt things, you know, from, from um, the checks or whatever written or money orders. So, um, you know, this isn't in his mind. It's not in my mind. It's a very real thing that we've been dealing with since he was 11. 11. No, since he was five and he was diagnosed with severe ADHD. And to the point where a teacher would walk around the perimeter of the elementary school so he could get some of it out of his system. It wasn't all the time. It only was like one year. And, um, you know, he's been on different medications to help himself. And we didn't start things at a real, like at five or six or seven or, or even 10, you know, nothing like that. His, I think his first medication, I don't, I honestly think he was about 13. I think he was a teenager. Cause even when we found out he had um, OCD and not just OCD, but the agoraphobia and the constant hand washing and the whatever before it turned into this intrusive thought stuff um you know he was 11 and i i don't think we just put him on some med or something we were just finding stuff out you know and then when you go through that stuff you get depressed and can have anxiety and there's all these other things Anyway, so I'm on chapter five in this book, and this chapter is psychosis and the psychotic disorders. And I got done reading about three days ago, the differences between delusions and hallucinations and things like that. Um, hallucinations can affect all the senses which I didn't know. I thought it was just sounds and maybe seeing things, right? Like spiders crawling on the wall, whatever, you know. But I didn't know it affected, uh, it can affect um, touching and um, tasting and whatever they are. I knew it affected hearing and seeing. Aren't there five? Once again, I forgot the other one, but, um, and we've talked about different parts of the brain, the limbic system and the, the part of the brain back here where you can see the farthest part of your brain is where you see the back of your head. Um, and then uh, the cerebral cortex up here and then the other part behind your right ear. Um, and now I can't remember the name of that. This is what I mean. But anyway, if you watch back my videos, you'll know there's three different hemispheres of the brain. Hi, Michael Blade. Hi. Thanks, everybody. Thank you for saying hi or saying hi and popping out or hanging out or whatever. Whatever you're doing. Thank you. So, um... And my, self, my son has been dealing with since he was about 20, 21, these kind of psychosis kind of things where it's been so bad he's just ran away and then he'll come home and he ran away the next day. And now he hasn't done that ever since he was on medication. He hasn't ran away. Thank God. It's awful. It's awful to wonder if your child's okay and to know they're having like practically a mental breakdown and they're on like the autism spectrum. So they're very vulnerable, and gullible to anybody out there, you know, it was horrible. Um, so this is the psychotic disorders. The word psychotic is often bandied bandied b-a-n-d-i-e-d bandied about carelessly with little realization that it has a specific definition that is often very different from the way it is being used and raider 
Raider knows all about these things. He goes through things with, I believe it's his brother. And I won't say any more. He's been on my panel and talked about it, but he understands. It's not in their head. It's not in his head. It's not in friends' heads. It's a real thing. It can be too much of a chemical in your brain or not enough. Too much dopamine can cause schizophrenia. If you have too much dopamine, it doesn't mean you're going to get schizophrenia, but you could. I read that, and not enough serotonin, as people know, is causes depression, you know. And there's other ways, right, than taking a pill. You can exercise and stuff, but some people need more than exercise. Hi, Winter. Well, that's really nice. Thank you so much. Thank you for coming out of the bushes and telling me that. That's really, really nice. That almost gets me choked up because <clears throat> sometimes I think, am I kind of boring? Am I? I mean, I sure, I'm sure I am to some people. Um, you know, but you guys, this is really important stuff. You know, and when I get accused of things, I I want to teach. It's not about defending or lashing back. It's not. Um, it's teaching. They're, they they actually have walks <clears throat> in Washington State. Here's Chicken Snake. He's from Washington State. Called Stomp the Stigma. A mental illness. Stomp. Stomp it out. Are you ever going to talk about the negative effects of medication? Yeah. Well, not the negative effects because um, I don't know what they are except, and I have mentioned this even with my own son, Chicken Snake, gaining weight. And I mean a lot fast to where you're half sick. And because apparently <clears throat> some of these psychotic meds make the hormone where you're hungry, like all the time and overdrive, right? And um, so that's not a good thing. And then when you're on them for a while, um, I'll just talk about the negative effects right that now that I'm aware of. When you're on them for a while and you come down off them, even tapering, it can be difficult for a little while because your body gets used to these things. Um, they're expensive unless you have insurance. And um, I'm certainly not, it's, this isn't about, this book isn't about, oh, everyone has to go take a pill. Mm -mm. Some people can make just as much serotonin in their bodies daily with exercise than just taking like a Zoloft or something. You know what I mean? So yeah. Yeah. No, I, I know. And there's so many to choose from, right? So many antidepressants. I mean, there used to be just like a few, right? Or six. Now there's what, 15? Effexor and sertraline and Prozac. And do you know what I mean? But in a way, I think it can be good because everybody's different, right? And they affect everybody different. Yeah, so... When someone gets angry and smashes things, some people may say he or she went psychotic. A mass M-U-R-D-E-R-E-R -E -R -E -R is often called a psychotic killer. And what about the movie Psycho? While each of these examples involves behavior that is unusual and falls outside the norms of behavior, expected of people in our society, they are not necessarily psychotic. In fact, the term psychotic refers primarily to perception and how a person interprets the world and only secondarily to what he or she does. How is the term psychotic defined? A variety of definitions for psychotic have been used over the years. Early on, the definition was fairly narrow. People were termed psychotic when they experienced delusions and hallucinations without realizing that these experiences were delusional or hallucinatory. Eventually, 
psychiatrists began to describe people who experienced hallucinations and or delusions as psychotic, even when the persons were aware that the experiences in question were hallucinations or delusions. Gradually, they came to recognize odd or purposeless behavior or speech as constituting a form of psychosis. There are some practitioners who use a still broader definition. Experiencing a degree of functional impairment sufficiently severe to interfere with the ability to meet ordinary life demands. However, this definition is too broad because most people become functionally impaired at various times of their lives, such as when they have the flu or other physical illnesses. Using this definition, everyone could be termed psychotic during those times. There is also a conceptual definition in which psychotic is described in terms of loss of ego, boundaries, or gross impairment in reality testing. The problem with this definition is that it only includes individuals who experience the severest degree of depersonalization or those individuals whose personal experience of reality is markedly different from the communal reality. Individuals whose symptoms are less severe or who retain or who retain some awareness of the communal reality would be excluded, even if their symptoms cause significant distress and problems in their daily life. The definition of psychosis that we will use throughout this book is experiencing delusions and or hallucinations that may be recognized as delusional or hallucinatory and or experiencing disorganized speech and or grossly disorganized or catatonic behavior. Sequential steps of the psychotic process. Beginning with feelings of fear and insecurity, the experience of psychosis can be seen as a series of steps through which the individual descends from initial avoidance into a state of isolation in which he or she becomes increasingly separated from the common experience of reality. In part, this results from a lack of ability to check out perceptions with other people. Yeah, I've heard about that. I've read about that. And they actually tell you about it. Well, what I've seen on all the little medicine pamphlet things. Well, hi, AK-47. Hi there. Hi, turquoise. Yeah. Yeah, it can take, it takes at least two months for it to get into your bloodstream and this and that and the other thing, right? But I'm just reading from this book just to bring some awareness, you know, because I've been uh, accused of some things. A good, I don't know, was it two or three weeks ago or something? And... You know, when, when you're trying to be the best advocate uh, for your child through his or her whole life, and then you're being accused of um, hindering, you know, their growth process and this and that and the other thing, to put it lightly, um, it hurts. It really hurts, especially when I barely ever maybe 1%, 2% in the thick of it a few years ago, not even now, didn't have support from his dad at all. You know, just made it even harder. Now, this is the pre-psychotic process. First, okay, so it's, starts at the bottom, I'm assuming. Projection. Thoughts and feelings are attributed to external people or objects. 
their inner feelings are denied and projected onto others. Wow. There's the word. There's the word I've been looking for. Fantasy. Retreat from the outside world to a self-centered reality. Loss of contact with the collective reality, personal reality shapes beliefs and behaviors. Wow. Displacement. Turning inward. Self-absorbing alienation. Attachment to other people is replaced by focusing on self. Dissoci dissociation, dissociation, lonely, unhappy, isolated from others, withdraws socially and physically, paranoia, fearful, insecure, ambivalent, avoids people associated with what is feared. Wow, my son went through all of this stuff. I was trying, we were trying to find a church. We went to a Presbyterian church up here and the pastor guy came out, spoke to my son very briefly and me. So I was there. I know what was said. And I think it was like a year later because he decided he didn't want to go. He was saying that it was a place with witches and blah, blah, blah. I was like, no. But then when I read about delusions the other day, you're not supposed to tell them they're wrong, but you're not supposed to agree with what you don't agree with. Do you see what I mean? You can kind of say things like, well, you know, that might be possible, but what, what would be like the what do you think other people would think or however it was worded, but you're not supposed to just give in and say, yeah, you're right. Uh, you know, you're going to be burned at the stake when you pass away. You know what I mean? Like you, just to get them to stop, you're not supposed to do that. And I never have, thank God. Oh, gosh. Well, I think the thing is, chicken snake, with akathisia is some people can't function and literally want to unalive themselves and talk about it. And I'm sure you've heard of this. There's unalive ideation. I don't dare say the S-U-I-C-I-D-E um, that can come about where the idea is of it, right? And then there, but you're not acting on it. You're not out there really trying, you know? Um, and, you know, I've already been through that kind of stuff with my son when he was younger and I don't think the all the pot smoking and the drinking and the, his dad's issues and um, his depression and his OCD diagnosis from an earlier age helped any of that but the onset of these they say of these psychosis psychotic kind of things people go through is adolescence usually it's not when you're a kid it's adolescence like 2021 20, that's right when it started with my son i just couldn't believe it that's when i was finding postcards on the windowsill with dates and things written and him convinced he was in a time loop and i mean we're talking convinced convinced and his own grandma said, you know, well, it sounds like a movie term to me and nothing matters. Once you get that 
belief or delusional belief in your mind, at least in my case, doesn't just go away. It's been 10 years. Um, yeah. Oh, yeah. No, I respect your wife. That's wonderful, Chicken Snake. Hi, Sky Angel. But I don't want to read about the negative effects of medication because someone might need it just to survive. But I want that to be up to them. I don't want to sit here and say, that's why I'm not saying, oh, you've got to go take a med. I'm just discussing what disorders are and that they're real. Yeah. This hasn't been information for, what, a week or 10 days or whatever on, oh, should someone be on meds or not? No, no, no. No, no, no. That's between them, their doctors, their family. Yeah. So this was what I just read, which I found interesting because it explained all of it. And, and certainly gave me some clarity, I can tell you that, of what he's experienced these past 12 years going through this sort of psychosis kind of thing. Now, psychotic process in relapse. This is what it says. Here's another way to look at how psychosis develops. Increased psychotic symptoms that lead to relapse often begin with changes in thought processes or sensory experiences. Altered perception and restricted attention produce both mood response and a need to explain to oneself and others what has been experienced. Unfortunately, these experiences don't fit with commonly held worldviews, which produces stress. Mood-related symptoms again increase. New interpretations are developed to explain the experience or dormant beliefs take on new life as the individual concludes that old beliefs are once again confirmed. This produces even more stress and the individual experiences the onset or increase in the duration, intensity, and or frequency of hallucinations and or delusions. Behavior then changes reflecting the altered sense of reality. As behavior becomes increasingly different from societal norms, the individual is encouraged to force to seek help or forced to seek help. The following diagram illustrates this process. So number one is cognitive perceptual changes. They're problems with attention, derealization, time distortion, racing thoughts. Wow. I, I got to show my son some of this stuff because I think it'll help him understand more. Number two, dysphoria. It's loss of drive, withdrawal, self-neglect. Number three, then you go to try to search for meaning. Perplexity, fear, withdrawal, preoccupation. Number four, you have this stress, this anxiety and restlessness. Then you go down to number five, incipient psychosis, delusions of reference, delusional beliefs, thought disorder, disinhibition, disinhibition would be, right, if you're inhibited, then you're not out there. So disinhibition would mean you're, right, you're not shy, you're not, anyway, and then six, relapse into a psychosis. Now, I didn't know there even was such a thing. I peeked at parts of this book years ago, and I 
I just have forgotten so much. Okay, these are words to know about psychosis. Aphasia, this is an imp impaired understanding or transmission of language by reading, writing, or speaking. Catatonic behavior is significantly abnormal movements such as immobility, catalepsy, or excessive purposeless activity that doesn't respond to external stimuli, catatonic agitation, catatonic negativism, extreme resistance to instructions or attempts to be moved, mutism, echolalia, echopraxia, or stereotyped movements. All of this stuff is catatonic behavior. Clang associations, choosing spoken words on the basis of sound rather than meaning, often as rhymes or puns. Concrete thinking. Thanks, Barbara. Yeah, I'm leaning against a nice, it's soft. See, I could push my fingers in, but it's very firm too. And it feels really good on my back. And I have a, I have a little table that was sent to me also. Both of these things by Maggie from the UK, a good couple of months ago. And I've used this now and then, but not the table till recently. And then I've got a little lamp on and I don't have that bright light. It's working really good. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, Morbid is back, Piper? Oh, that's good. I was wondering when he would come back. Good, thank you for letting me know. Oh, you guys, those coyotes are going at it again. Okay, listen to this. I have to get up. You have to hear this. <sighs> These are coyotes. You hear screeching in the background? You hear that? Let's see if it starts again. It was like, did you hear that, you guys? It stopped raining. It's still kind of sprinkling, maybe. Oh my gosh. My window wasn't even all the way open. <sighs> Did that freak you kitties out? Did it freak you out? Oh, shoot. Did you guys hear that at all? Oh, he has a whole new channel by posting on your community post. Well, if I do, I've never used my community post. Is it under morbid? Mating season, maybe. <laughs> well, this is what I heard last time it happened and I filmed it like that. Um, I heard that 
the main head one can call for the others to follow him. Or if one's lost, they'll screech out. But I usually hear like, not 10, not 20. We're looking at like 50 screeching all at once. And it's not dogs and it's not barking. And we do have woods right there. And I have seen them before. I saw one pretty skinny one once when I was trying to rescue a cat for a friend across the way in the gosh darn horrible briar bushes. I got all scraped up and everything. Oh, you heard him? You'll try to put the link in chat. Um, yeah, I'm starting to frown on that a little bit, though, Piper, in all honesty. And I'm not trying to be rude to you or morbid or anyone, but I don't really have people's links in my chat anymore. And I don't put mine in people's because YouTube goes through and does this like purging thing. And they frown upon that. And then also people with fake accounts, they clean out. Um, and I looked into this because I went from 2,657 down to 2,620. I mean, that's 37 subs, you know. Um, Sir Morbid X. Okay. Yeah. Write it in like that. Just don't put his link in if you don't mind. Hi, Ashley Y. Sir Morbid X. That's good. <laughs> um, Oh, I know how to use my community page. I mean, I should. Don't you just type on it? I just don't bother with it. Because honestly, I'm so sporadic all the time. Like, I don't know when I'm going live. I don't, you know, I, I can't even hardly set it up a half hour ahead of time. Hi, Jess Becca. You like to read community pages, Winter? But I mean, that's just type it like you just did like this in people's chats. His name is Sir Morbid X. He's a very popular man, right? With quite a few subs. I mean, he'll, word will get around and it'll be, it'll be great. Thank you for letting me know. Oh, golly. Um, okay, um, concrete thinking, interpreting words primarily in a literal manner, often without recognizing that some words have multiple meanings, or that phrases may have secondary interpretations, as in Proverbs. Echolalia, that means repeating others' words often in a senseless or parrot-like fashion. Echopraxia, imitating the movements of another person in a semi-automatic, uncontrolled, and non-willful manner. Formal thought disorder, impairment in the way one forms and expresses thoughts. Neologisms, new, distorted, or existing words that are given a highly subjective meaning. Stereotyped movements, repetitive, non-functional motor activity that appears to be driven, such as rocking, hand waving, head banging, hitting oneself, pill rolling, or picking at one's skin or body orifices. Waxy flexibility, able to be molded into a position by others. Limbs feel to the molder like they are made of wax. What? Eight, 
able to be molded into position by others. I thought it was like mentally being molded into, you know what I mean? But then it says limbs. All right, I'm just going to turn the page. Okay, so just a little bit more here. What is psychosis? Behavior, pacing, isolating, immobility, latent responses, mutism, echolalia, echopraxia, ritualistic behaviors, unusual inappropriate behaviors, unusual inappropriate dress, repetitive movements, disorganized speech. The mood, guilt, fear, paranoia, detachment, lack of motivation, anxiety, depression, feeling tormented. Effect or affect, flat, blunted, or inappropriate affect, agitation, impaired empathy, physiology, uh, physi physiology, clumsiness, blunting of pain, ticks or tremors, waxy flexibility, enlarged brain, ventricles, enhanced or blunted sensations, psychomotor retardation, psychomotor agitation, decreased arm swinging. Spirituality, religious preoccupation, emptiness, nihilistic thinking, apathy, religious delusions, cognition, impaired concentration, impaired perception of time and space, flooding of thoughts, heightened awareness, receptive aphasia, impaired visual interpretation, difficulty sorting and interpreting stimuli, impaired logic, concrete thinking, neologisms, word salad, blocking of thoughts, distortion of body boundaries, delusions, hallucinations. The psychotic spectrum, this is the last page I'll read. Because the next part literally talks about schizophrenia, and I'll cover that in the, the next time. The psychotic disorders include a number of diagnoses that have in common the experience of psychosis. The criteria for these disorders are located towards the back of this chapter. Psychoses that are produced by use of substance or as symptoms of a medical condition are diagnosed as some substance-induced psychotic disorder and psychotic disorder due to a general medical condition. These conditions are generally short-lived and tend to disappear once the substance is removed or the medical condition treated. When making these diagnoses, a clinician is asked to name the substance of abuse or the medical condition present. Delusional disorder is distinguished from the other psychotic disorders by the fact that the delusional belief involves beliefs that, while false, could be true. Another differentiating aspect of delusional disorder is that it does not impair the individual's daily functioning except for aspects of daily life related to the content of the delusion. Most psychotic disorders do not include a prominent mood disturbance. When mood disturbance is a major factor, oh my gosh, the diagnosis may be schizoaffective disorder. Wow. That's what my psych his psychiatrist said last year. That's what I've been thinking for the past five years. Schizoaffective disorder. The affective means mood. And it does affect his mood. Makes him depressed, makes him scared, makes him anxious, makes him... 
And when it doesn't, when delusions don't affect your mood, then it's just a delusion. Okay, in shared psychotic disorder, an individual develops a delusion that is the same or similar to a delusion held by someone to whom he or she feels close. A psychotic disorder not otherwise specified, NOS, not otherwise specified, is diagnosed when the individual experiences symptoms of psychosis but has not yet met the criteria for one of the other psychotic disorders or when the clinician lacks sufficient information about the individual's medical history or use of substances. And then there's um, differential diagnosis, the psychotic disorders. There's duration, intensity, frequency, and there's a brief psychotic disorder that lasts less than one month. There's schizophreniform disorder, which lasts more than one month, but less than six months. Then there's schizophrenia, which lasts at least six months. And then there's schizoaffective disorder, lasts at least six months. So with schizophrenia, you have two psychotic clusters that must be present, symptoms of depression or mania if present, do not meet the criteria for a specific mood disorder. And after the acute psychotic symptoms are in remission, there is ongoing impairment in one's ability to work, attend school, maintain interpersonal relationships, or meet one's physiological needs remains <clears throat> present after the acute psychotic symptoms are in remission. The same with schizophreniform disorder. Schizophreniform disorder, you guys, never heard that. And I heard about schizoid, schizoaffective disorder. I heard about that literally about five years ago. The schizophreniform disorder, you have to have at least two psychotic clusters also. After the acute psychotic symptoms are in remission, there is ongoing impairment in one's ability to work, attend school, maintain interpersonal relationships, or meet one's physiological needs. The difference then from the schizophrenia, schizophrenia or everything remains after the psychotic symptoms are in remission. Whereas schizophreniform disorder, you can literally go into acute psychotic symptoms are in remission but there is ongoing impairment. Wow. Schizoaffective disorder is when acute psychotic symptoms are in remission. You have to have at least two psychotic clusters. And those, you know, the clusters would be um, mood and a delusion or hallucination. My son has delusions. They don't think he's schizophrenic. They don't. He's been up to the hospital twice in the last uh, to the mental part in the last 
six years. Uh, yeah. When acute psychotic symptoms are in remission, there is ongoing impairment in ability to work, attend school, maintain relationships, or meet physiological needs. The impairment remains present after the acute psychotic symptoms are in remission and during periods of remission from episodes of mood disturbance. Compared to schizophrenia, it says remains present after the acute psychotic symptoms are in remission. It doesn't say from episodes of mood disturbance. So schizophrenia is not like a necessarily a mood disturbance. It's more of a, it doesn't have as much to do with the mood Wow. I should talk to my, my ex about this stuff. Okay, so next time, you guys, we'll discuss schizophrenia versus multiple personality disorder. We'll discuss schizoaffective disorder a little more, the brief psychotic disorder, the schizophreniform a little bit more. Um... Fast facts about schizophrenia, risk factors associated with schizophrenia, negative and positive symptoms of schizophrenia. I didn't really know. Oh, it doesn't mean positive as in good. It says attentional impairment, hallucinations, delusions, significant evidence of formal thought disturbance, manifested by marked incoherence, derailment, tangent, tangentiality, tangentiality, tiality, tiality, or illa, illogicality, illogicality bizarre or disorganized behavior. None of that sounds positive. So they just mean, I don't know what they mean. Then there's cognitive dysmetria systems, symptoms. See, this is what I mean. How can all of this just be in someone's head? There's so many, you guys. Residual schizophrenia, undifferentiated schizophrenia, I mean, you guys, it's really kind of scary and slightly depressing. Really, I think it is. All right, so we'll cover schizophrenia next time. Oh. Oh, okay. Piper, he's going to go live tomorrow, maybe. What? Rapper, you're on your way to the ER? Oh, my gosh. Something wrong with my hernia? I'll keep you all posted. My son had a hernia. He had to have it removed when he was, I think he was 14 or 15. Mm. Yay, there's stardust. You were accidentally blocked. I don't know how on earth it happened, but you're not anymore. So happy to see you here. Thank you. Oh, Swiffering, Swiffering with the Swiffer. Hi, Halloween baby. Thank you for coming in. Thank you. Thank you. Yay. Oh. It's great to 
be back home. Ah, <sighs> wow, that's nice. Beachy next week. Together with Beachy next week. Well, Beachy doesn't exactly um, like me, you know, but. Uh, I could think about it or see what happens or um, or just watch the program or something because that's Wild Angels, right? She's, she's back at it. Beachy likes everyone. <laughs> You're funny. Wow, it's only been an hour and a half, and I'm exhausted. It's 10, 11, 12, 1. I'm not going to do a panel. It's a lot of reading. I'm just, I'm tired. I think it's from having these allergies slash cold or whatever I've had, you guys, for the last week. So I'm going to go. Yeah, we will all be together for visit next week. Okay, hon, thank you. Thank you for the invite. Uh, Lainey will probably go live right now. <gasps> According to Lainey. And, um, I mean, it's only 1040 here, but look at my eyes, see? I'm not all wide awake. I had coffee earlier. I'm sipping on a Pepsi. I'm just just tired. Maybe it's some of this weather. Maybe it's riding my bike and walking more lately. I, I don't think I can let the kitties be in here though tonight when I'm sleeping. You know, I can't let just the kittens be in and not the older cats. So they got their cat tree and everything out there. But yeah. All right, you guys, an hour and a half. Please hit the like. Please subscribe to me if you haven't. I was all excited, Lainey. No, I'm cleaning. Well, maybe after that you'll go live. I don't know. But um, from being on your program, or I thought, or whatever, I went from, anyway, I gained four subs. And then this morning when I look, that was like last night when I got off your show, I was back down to the gosh darn, <sighs> you know, where I, I um, lost four subs, and I was just like, crap. Yay, LOL. Oops. I'm wondering if there's something in the straw of your... Yeah, well, that's a... Hi, Pecan Pie. Hi. Yeah. Um, I mean... <clears throat> I prefer to buy the bedding, right? That's the soft clothy stuff, right? The chunks of cloth, but it's it's much more expensive. Um, but I've I've had you know these guinea pigs for thirteen years, and now this one. And as everyone knows, when he passes, and he's like on his ninth year, and they usually die anywhere from six to eight. So I mean. He seems to be doing fine. He's munching on his hay now, but sometimes this hay even and his grass that I give him makes me sneeze. But you know, um, I don't think I'm allergic to cats. I've only been sneezing this past week. Um, I hear you can get allergies at, at any time. They can just come out of nowhere. And I feel like, oh, Lulu has a channel. Well, she could go live. Um, but I feel like they're allergies. Like at first I assumed it was a cold, but ooh, I know. I know. Usually it's like six to eight years, anywhere in there. The younger one that I had with him passed away sooner. It's awful. I mean, I'm just like, 
I believe in always having two so they can thrive and be happy, but I can't do this anymore. 13 years is long enough. They're expensive, much more expensive than just buying cat food and litter. You've got to make sure you have extra fruit and vegetables, not a ton. You know, he had his piece of apple this big this morning and he had cucumber yesterday. He had some broccoli today, a piece of cauliflower the other day. I like to mix it up for him. He likes melon. He likes blueberries. He loves strawberries. He likes a little bit of banana. He doesn't like pineapple. The younger one before he passed did. Um, I don't think, I think I gave him peach once or a nectarine. He didn't like it. So it's interesting, you know, he likes watermelon. So I give him a little bit of fruit in the morning, his little bit of vegetable in the afternoon and um, for the crunchiness on his teeth. And he likes it a little treat before I go to bed. I give him some carrot. So. Oh, Lulu, let's get you a channel. OK. Hi, Sherry. Hi, hon. Sherry has two other trips planned with the girls. Yeah, she's going to New York. Oh, <laughs> you're cleaning too. Everyone's cleaning. Oh, I'm just so tired all of a sudden. I'm just, I'm gonna, I know Sherry's here now, but Sherry, I'm tired. Look at my eyes. I'm just like, <sighs> now, I, you know, I did take a nap. I finished my coffee. I'm sipping on this, but my mind isn't just all quick now to just like do a panel. And I didn't see you earlier and I did a lot of reading and way earlier I invited you and Raider and Lini, all of you to come up. And now I'm beat. <sighs> so I'm going to end this live. Please don't take it personal. I'm just tired. Maybe it's this weather. It's just been pouring rain, so it's been kind of gray today. I like the rain and all that, but I mean, it's only quarter to 11 my time, and I'm tired. But you guys, I am 61. You know, I had a ton of energy when I was 50. When I was 50, I had energy like I was 30. But my stroke, too, just kind of, shoot, I got to take my meds. I haven't even done that. They're sitting over there. So I'm going to end my life, take my meds, get to bed early so I feel raring to go tomorrow enough to at least do another live. Thank you, everyone, for being here at PCT is Extreme with me. I miss you guys when I don't see you. Been trying to spend a little more time with my daughter, watching silly shows on TV, TV, like Flava Flav and Cheaters. I know that sounds kind of dumb, but um, just little kind of reality shows that she's never seen before, which it's kind of funny to see her reactions and expressions to some of these things. Um, yeah, so, you know, spring's here. We've gone for a walk every day. Today we didn't. Yesterday we did, the day before, the day before. The day before that, I rode my bike. Or two days ago, I rode my bike, picked up my hair color. See, it is red. It's just a deep, see? Very deep, auburny red. But it almost looks black dark brown anyway thank you everybody thank you so much stay safe okay all right love you bye for now